Hello, it's me again. This time, as you can see, we're looking at a Casio Pier. Um, it's a pocket PC, this, so it's not strictly retro. Uh, these things came out around 2000. Yeah, I guess you could sort of class it as retro. The Dreamcast was sort of around that time, wasn't it? Just before that. And that was also Windows CE uh, powered. You know, you'll see the Windows CE logo there on the front of the Dreamcast. Um, so, yeah, this is as described as uh, faulty. If I just uh, try and switch it on, uh, you'll see it just does nothing actually. Um, so we'll take a look at the battery in a sec. You can see this has got one of these little rubber, it's like a rubberized, you know, or a coated um, piece of metal, but it's like a rubber sort of texture to it and it's a bit, just a little bit sticky, not a lot, but it's got, it's suffering from that same thing that those Amstrad uh, notepads or whatever they are, uh, suffer where you know the plastic or the, whatever it is this coating starts to uh, age you know uh, breaks down something happens to it where it goes all gooey um, something leaks out of it but I'm gonna try I'll try and clean that up with a bit of soap and water but it's not too bad it's not like mega sticky but and you can see it's a bit chipped in places there can you see on the top here so going around this we've got the stylus here you know so it's a you know touch screen but you do really need to use the stylus you can use your finger but you, it's like pressure you know you've got to type pressure you have to use your nail really um, two LEDs here, one indicates uh, power, I think the left one's power, the right one is, um, I'm not sure actually, can't remember. Um, headphone socket, uh, power switch, uh, and then there's various buttons here around this to, you know, use the, the features and things, you know, like for, to bring up your mail list and your browser and various other things, and then obviously a directional pad there. I think there's one here for dictations, you can press that and it will go into uh, voice recorder mode, so you can record. Um, your own voice and you can see here underneath this is where the charge and IO connector is you know for docking it and stuff um, and now I do have one of these already in the exact same model it's a uh, as you can see here it's an E105 Casio um, so this was uh, when the pocket PCs were fairly uh, early really you know they're fairly new to the market and there were three I think there were three variants it was like an ARM core um, a MIPS core and another one which I forget, might have been Intel, I can't remember, but there were three different sort of competing pocket PC architectures at the time and they were all sort of supported by Microsoft, you know, with the Windows CE stuff there. But it did, you know, cause a few issues. It meant that if you want to get a program, you needed to check that there was a, a build for your device. And because they were all based on different processes, they were all sort of subtly different in capabilities, you know, performance-wise. Um, one thing I do remember playing on this, the one I've got of these in the loft. The one, now the one I've got in the loft is in absolutely mint condition. This, you know, I got it from uh, W. H. Smiths. They had a uh, like a clearance sale where they were selling stock that had just got left in the storeroom that, for one reason or another, they'd never dealt with. Um, and this was uh, fairly new, but it was one that had been returned by somebody. Somebody had bought one on WH Smiths, powered it on, and it didn't work. You know, they couldn't get it to switch on. Um, and it was on the shelf there, five pounds in a box, you know, per, per, in pretty much perfect condition. Um, so I took it home, disassembled it, uh, cleaned up the switches. Now there's a couple of different switches, actually. There's one related to this battery bay here, or there might even be two, I don't know. So if you've not got a battery, if you've not got the switch in the right position here, for example, to get into the, the uh, you know, so that it's locked, it, the device won't power up. But if you've got any dirt in that switch, there it won't power up. And that was all I did. I just cleaned the switches up, even though it was brand new. You know, we disconnect and reconnect all the flat flexes and things inside. Reassembled it, and it works. It was perfect. Brand new. You know, uh, one of these at the time they were two or three hundred pounds, I think, and I got it for five quid. I couldn't believe it. It was one of the best things I've ever bought. Um, so yeah, um, coming back to my experience of these, like I said, this, uh, there's numerous games and things you can run on these. I had an emulator, I've got it on CD somewhere, a Game Boy emulator. It was one of the first ones, uh, you know, piloted to handheld like this. Uh, it was licensed, you know, you had to pay for it and stuff. I remember uh, being a registered uh, owner of that. That was quite cool. Uh, but also you can play Doom on here as well, um, Pocket Doom. So I'll have a go at that if we can, uh, you know, spring this back to life. And in case you're wondering what this is here, this is for the IRDA. This is what we used before you kids had uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, uh, infrared. So you had to, you know, point this at a device, you know, enable it on the device here, I think, within the software, and then, you know, connect to another device, another pocket PC or something else, you know, that's got an IRDA port. Lots of laptops used to have them. And the infrared there, you know, you would have a, like a serial connection across there in order to transfer contacts and data and stuff like that. So the other useful thing while we're here, it shows you the polarity there, 
but it doesn't mention the voltage. Now, because I've got my original base station here that I used to use uh, with the one that's in the loft, I don't know how this managed to not go in the loft with the, the unit actually in the box and the manuals and all the rest of it. For some reason, I kept this out. So you can see the uh, part number on the base station there. Um, and this is marked. I don't know if you can be able to see it. I've just pulled that little connector out that I've been using just to connect this up. Um, you can just about see down there, DC 6 volts. And looking at the back here, you can see it says DC 3.7 volts, 3 volts DC, 2 supply, 3.6 watt. There's no reference there to 6 volts. So that could confuse you if you get one of these without the uh, power supply there. But you need 6 volts DC um, and you need to go with the polarity shown here, centre, positive. And you've also got a compact flash slot up here. I'm not sure what the capabilities of this are you know limits and things I've got some 4 gig compact flash cards we can try one of those later if we can get it to boot up now I did have uh, you know some I used compact flash cards with the other one that I've got but they were uh, pretty small I think the largest one I had was like 64 meg or something and you can see there's a switch there to lock the compact flash card in as well uh, and a reset button there to you know do like a hard reset on the thing so I think what we'll do next is have a look at the batteries actually so uh, you can see this little switch here if you slide it to the left it opens the main battery bay so there's our main battery pull that little tab just to lift that up a bit I think there you go so you can see 3.7 volts uh, 1400 milliamp hour uh, Casio so it's an original battery still um, and then the back if you switch it to the backup uh, position there I think yeah that comes off can you can see that so we've got room for a CR2032 there which is uh, as it says a backup battery just to hold the settings and time and date and stuff it doesn't uh, and a little bit of data I think on the internal uh, SRAM or whatever's there uh, I think the 32 megabytes these you know it's 32 mega RAM they're not very uh, beefy really by today's standards but uh, yeah I mean I'm pleased with the overall condition of this I mean it'll clean up I think it's just a question of whether we can uh, get it working so just measuring the voltages here, so we'll put the negative on there and the positive and as you can see, zip, zero, nada, it's completely flat. Uh, now what sometimes happens with batteries like this, lithium ions, um, they go into a kind of, they call it a sleep mode, um, which basically means, you know, when, when you just leave them sat around idle, even when they're fully charged, the charge level drops, 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 just with no use. Even when it's not even connected to a device, it will just go down, 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 down over a period of time. So let's say, you know, three months, six months, a year, two years, it will go into sleep mode. It will be just so drained inside that... Um, they may consider it dangerous to recharge it actually but that often it, you know that isn't the case it's not like some deliberate process i think it just drains so much there's no charge left in it whatsoever um now you know word of warning uh, and i covered this on videos before it was the same on the violeta one that had a lithium ion battery what you can do with these is just connect a power supply now this is 3.7 volts initially to jump start this i would probably go with two volts uh, and you want current limited power supplies. So I've got the uh, power supply here, the Farnell, and this will only deliver half an amp on the setting it's on now. Uh, I'll set it to two volts, and all we need to do is connect uh, the crop clips up. Positive, say two volts, negative two volts, and just hold it there for a few seconds. Now, I would, if you're gonna do something like this, bear in mind these can explode. It could explode, it could blind you, it could start a fire. So if you do that, I'd be wearing uh, you know, pretty thick gloves you know something that's uh, fireproof and uh, some protective eye goggles uh, maybe even a piece of glass or perspex or something in front of you so that if it does explode it's not going to cause a problem uh, fire extinguisher on standby so yeah you've been warned you know you, they can they can explode you've got to be very careful you know come at current limits and the power supply is one idea starting with a few very low voltage like two volts is another good idea and just test for a few seconds then stop and just feel it is it getting warm if there's any signs of heat there at all after a second or two, you're going to have a problem. It shouldn't be getting warm after a second or two. And then you could do the same thing, you know, connect it back up just for four or five more seconds. Again, just check the heat of it. It's not getting hot. And then you maybe give it 20, 20, sec 20 to 30 seconds. But again, just be mindful. If it starts to get hot at all, you know, you need to dispose of it in some safe way. Uh, put it somewhere safe so it's not going to start fire, it's not going to explode. Um, but I have done this many, many, many times and have never, ever, ever had a battery explode on me. But that doesn't mean it won't happen and can't happen. It can.
once so I've done that for you know 20 or 30 seconds stick it back on charge see if it starts to charge up um, if it doesn't you could set your power supply to the exact voltage so in this case here 3.7 volts and give it to 10 to 20 seconds like that but again start off with just a second or two and chest temperature you know uh, just you know be good be cautious protect yourself don't start a fire don't blind yourself and try not to you know uh, put yourself at risk so as you can see I'm using an oven tray here just to contain this because it's easy just to carry this outside should it ex you know set on fire uh, I've got my battery here protective uh, gloves yes I am using oven gloves here but uh, they're good enough uh, just for this and uh, protective uh, goggles but as I say, uh, you're better off having a piece of glass in between you or something, really. So our contact on this side here is negative, so I'll just hold the negative. And as I said, I'm using a current limited power supply here, one amp. And just hold it on there for a few seconds. Just check the temperature, stone cold. And just repeat that, do another five seconds, check the temperature, it should still be cold. And then maybe give it a good 20 seconds. And after that 20 seconds, it shouldn't even be lukewarm, really. You'll no notice next to no difference, especially with a, you know, a, a low uh, current power supply, something that will only go up to about an amp or less. Half an amp is perhaps a bit safer. But that's all you need, 20 or 30 seconds there. So what I did is at various points I took the battery out and measured the voltage and I got up to about three, just over three volts and tried powering it on while it's connected to the uh, charge station here as you can see it's come up. So we've got a bit of a band at the top there like it's like, I don't know what it is, light has affected that or something you know. Um, but the colours and things are fine, it works. So I did exactly as I described, and as you saw there, it started charging. Uh, so I put the meter now, and this is at about seven or eight hours charge actually. Look at that, 4.1 volts. It's actually good, almost good as new. That's the sort of level you would see on a bat on this battery from new. If it was less than four, I would expect this with it usage, a lot of use, to be less than 3.7 volts if I'm honest. But it just goes to show I don't think this has had much use actually in its life. It's been sat around for, I would suggest, the best part of five or ten years in storage somewhere. Um, it was perhaps used for a year or two. You know, that's where the little tiny little scratches have come from there, around the edge. But as you can see with the screen, it's hardly had any use. That has seen no use in its life. So let's get the battery back in. And we'll find a backup battery in a minute actually. Um, I'm sure I've got a load of spare CR2032 CR somewhere. Uh, I know Ali had a, a ton of those uh, GP ones, the cheap ones in her collection there. Uh, switch them to main, slide that in, slide the lock, press the power button. Oh, can you see that? It's coming up. Now initially the screens are dimmed on these I think until it, it completely boots, if, I, if memory serves. Sorry, it started raining in here now, that's super annoying. I mean, you can see how clean that is. Look, there's not even a scratch, not a single scratch on that screen. Yeah, I think soap and water is the best approach for this, actually, for these side bits. Yeah, it could just be that the backlight is not as bright as I remember. As you can see, we've got a calibration thing popped up here, so we'll just uh, tap, follow the instructions. Uh, press the action button, which is that there. Sweet, that's fine, it's working. Yes, I mean, yeah, you can see, you know, the, the, the technology of these screens, nowhere near as good as anything uh, more modern. Um, and there is a kind of like a, a, a patch at the top that looks like it's been affected by sunlight or something, I don't know. It's, it looks okay now, actually, it didn't a minute ago. Um, so, yeah, it's warning us about the backup battery there. Fantastic. So, I think what I'll do is I'll uh, take this compact flash card go and put my pocket, uh, copy of Pocket Doom on there and uh, we'll give it a try with that um, I think if memory serves the power indicator is really lame as well actually yeah you can see it just as good and it shows this battery half full here that is not indicative that it's only 50% charged all it is, is all it shows you is either good or very low there's nothing in between 
So we'll get our compact flash card in there, we'll just pull the flap up. If memory serves, these can come off those flaps if you're not careful. Um, so I'm not sure which way it goes round. I guess it's going to be lip towards the back. Yeah, there we go. And if the other thing I remember with these is, you see this... Oh, my flap's falling off now. Yeah, that flap can fall off. It's not broken, it just goes back on. But can you see the card lock thing here? You can't engage it. Uh, and this must have been uh, something to do with early compact flashcards, because you can see now, take it out, see this little notch here? There's no notch, there's no hole there, but I do remember some of the ones I had, uh, when I, uh, you know, when I used my old one there in the loft, had uh, a notch there. So that's interesting. Uh, so we'll get the compact flashcard in, um, put the cover back on. Yeah, so it says, uh, warning, battery power may not be sufficient to run your PC car. This was a standard warning that pops up with certain devices. Um, I think it should be okay with this one, so we'll say, yeah, we use the card on battery power, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, if memory serves, what you had to do is you had to go into the menu somewhere and add, there it is, add an icon. And then we do uh, define, I think. Yeah, so we click the new button, application, uh, Browse, uh, upper folder, storage card, and then you can see if you tap the storage card again, this is the weird way it navigates. It drills down, you know, so within the storage card you can then see the folder. So pocket doom, uh, change that to an XC. You can see there you go, it's picked up doom.exe. Okay, sweet, it's got the icon, we'll give it a name. Um, so yeah, just like you you know, virtual keyboard you get on your iPhone and Android uh, systems these days. Uh, what do we do now? Click the X, I think, up here. There we go. And if we tap that, there you go. Doom for Windows CE. Uh, so let's go into the shareware version of Doom. Now bear in mind, like I said, there was nothing else like this at the time. There was no other handheld device that was capable of running Doom. And you've got everything apart from the uh, music, I think. So let's try and uh, navigate this. How do you do it now? There we go, new game. Need Deep and the Dead, Hurt Me Plenty. And as you can see, we have Doom. How's your fire? There we go. Sorry, you know, it's hard to get this in the right place so you can see it without the reflective light on it. But as you can see, performance is actually pretty blooming good, actually. It runs better than I remember. Uh, let's go up there, get that armour. Let's go find some bad guys. Sorry, I know that light is reflecting off this really badly. So yeah, you've got all the samples and things, you just don't have the music. But I think you'll agree that that's uh, pretty blooming good actually for 2000 technology. Anyway, at least I've got a spare of these now, and I've got two. So yeah, lots of reflectivity on the screen there, but you can see the processor type is a MIPS R4000. Uh, and we do indeed have a 32 meg of RAM there. Uh, and it's mentioning the expansion card there as a SanDisk. Not that pickle for five pounds. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.